In this video, we're going to take a look at working with the Octane Daylight Node in Octane for Cinema 4D. And for this video, I'm using the Limo01.c4d scene. So I have the live viewer open here. I'm going to set this to direct lighting just so it renders a little bit faster. We don't get to see the space pilot's face anymore, but that's okay. He's using a tinted shield, I guess. In this scene, I already have an Octane Daylight Node. So I'm going to select it here and delete it just to get rid of it for the moment. And you can see when we do that, now the scene is lit with kind of a flat gray color. Let's zoom out a little bit here. We can also see that we got landing lights here. They're looking a little bit disco. So I'm going to select the camera here, go to the Octane camera tag, and find post-processing. Let's just turn this off for the moment so we're not distracted by that. Okay, so now we have this scene of just a space limousine, a little structure in the background, and our pilot and a robot. So let's add daylight. So I'll go to the live viewer menu and choose objects, lights, octane daylight. Of course, you can also add this using the octane dialog either way. And you can see we have this kind of sunset lighting here in our scene. So you rotate around, you can see there's even the sun right here. It's kind of this dim orange glow. So what I'm going to do is, let's zoom out a little bit, switch to the move tool. I'm just going to move this node up a little bit so it's easier to see. And now I can use the rotate tool to rotate it. And when I rotate it, it changes the lighting for the time of day. So you can see this is what it looks like now. So the more this is parallel to the ground, the more it's going to look like a sunset lighting. The more this is perpendicular to the ground, the more it's going to look like high noon. You can see the shadows are very crisp and clear. So let's get something like this where we can clearly see the shadows, but it still looks kind of nice. Get a view where we can kind of see the sun in the sky. Now let's take a look at the settings that are available. So I'll select that Octane Daylight, and let's select the tag here. And we have primary environment and visible environment. So we'll talk about these settings in the video on HDR lighting. Um, I want to talk about just the basic settings right here. So the first one is turbidity. And this uh, controls, well, the turbidity of the environment, meaning how much haze or smog or how much uh, atmospheric interference there is in the lighting in the scene. Now, if I start to increase this, you won't see anything change in the environment, but you will see that the shadows start to get a little bit softer. When I move it all the way up, we can see we have very soft shadows. We also have a reflection of the objects in the scene, but you can see the shadows are definitely very hazy and almost barely visible. If I bring this all the way down, we get very sharp, clear shadows. So that's, a, that's how turbidity works. Uh, the lowest setting you can get is two. Power controls the strength of the of the light, or the power of the light, I should say, or how much energy is being emitted by the sun. So as I bring this down, you can see we get almost like nighttime setting. We can still see the sun in the sky there. So if I bring it up, it gets very bright. That's pretty straightforward. North offset basically changes the position of the sun in the sky by offsetting the where north is in the scene. And then sun size controls the size of the sun that's visible in the sky. So if we want to make this look like we're in some kind of distant planet here with a giant sun in the background, you know, rotate this down a little bit. There we go. Looks like these guys might be in a lot of trouble. The sun is invading the planet, but regardless, looks kind of cool. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Let's bring this down to a reasonable size. New model switches between the most recent model of the daylight system and the original model. It's mostly there for backwards compatibility. As you can see, the new model tends to look and behave a lot more realistically than the old model. So we're going to leave new model on. And now, of course, we can change the sky color. So let's say we wanted to really make it look like we're on a distant alien planet. I could change this to like a purpley sky. So we have a planet that is stuck in the 1980s. Um, 
And then, of course, we can also adjust the sun color. So make it look at kind of a purplish sun. We get this. That looks horrible. So let's bring this back to a yellowy orange. This will probably look even worse. Eh, that looks kind of interesting as alien planets go. Mixed sky texture, we'll talk a little bit more about when we get into HDR lighting, and we'll talk about important sampling when we get into talking about the kernels. Uh, finally, I want to take a look at the ground. And you can't see the ground because I have a ground plane here, so let's turn off the visibility of that ground plane. So now you can see we have this sort of black haze. If we want to change the ground color, let's say I want to make this like bright green or something like that, it becomes more obvious. And you can see that it's reflected in the objects in the scene as I change the color of that ground plane. There's no shadows cast on it, of course. It's just kind of a haze. But we can also change the angle and the blend. So if we didn't care about seeing the ground, but we wanted kind of that color in there, we could use that. If I bring back our ground plane, you can still see a little bit of that green color being reflected on the objects. Whoops, because it's beneath the ground. So that's the basics of working with daylight in Octane for Cinema 4D.